What is up everyone, welcome back to today's video on Bio Linux. Now in this one, I'll be showing you the top 4 docs for Linux. So if you don't know what a dock is, it's basically a thing that you interact with, either on the top, bottom, left or right of your screen, and what you use to put applications into to launch them. So you kind of know macOS, that's the thing at the bottom where you click to launch your apps. And I mean, if you have a dock, you're using it all the time because that's how you get stuff done. So the four docks that I'm going to be showing you in this video are very customizable, responsive, minimal, lightweight, and fast. So, let's get started. Okay everyone, so the first plank on this list, in no particular order, is plank. And the reason this is on the list is because it's super lightweight. I mean, it's probably the most lightweight plank on this whole list. So, to install it, you can just use your software center, it's available in the AUR. So you can just look at plank, elegant, simple, clean dock. Click there, and if you're on Ubuntu, you can go to launchpad.net slash plank and install it that way. So let me just go over here, hit install, apply, and commit, and share the password, and it should be installed. Now if you don't have some dependencies, it will install those, but mostly it's very, very lightweight. So let me just close out of these. And now to actually start up plank, you can either go in your terminal and run plank like this, as you can see that it's started here, or you can just go in your application launcher and run Plank. And if you do that, that's better because over here, if you kill this process right here, it'll just kill the actual Plank. So just open it up in your application launcher. So here's Plank. It should be running in the background. And now you can see that there's a problem here, at least on XFCE, and that is that there is a shadow on the Plank. And it's very easy to get rid of that. You can actually go into your settings. And if you go into Window Manager Tweaks, go over to Compositor, uncheck Show Shadows under Dock Windows, and that will remove that shadow. Now clear all that, and one thing I do recommend doing is keeping, if you have a taskbar, keeping that on the opposite side of your plank, or at least on the side or something, so it doesn't interfere with it if you have some windows or tabs here. So you can just move that while you're in Panel Preferences, unlocking the panel, and moving it all the way down. There it is. And here we have it. So now let me show you some of the customization. So if you just right click like this, you don't really get any options. You right click on a, on a icon, you only get keep and dock. Now to actually bring up the full set of options, you have to hold control and then click the right mouse button. And now you will get the preferences. So you can see that you can do quit, about preferences, translate, all this kind of stuff. So you can just hit preferences. And here we have the customization options. So, you can set the theme, there are actually tons of ones available on Gnome Look and stuff like that. I personally really like the transparent theme because it just kind of blends in, but if you have a GTK theme going, then you can set it to use that, which is, I think is pretty handy. So let me just set the theme to transparent, and now the pos position, you can set that to left, right, top, or bottom, any um, position. And you can also set it to run only on certain displays, so I only have one display here, so I'll just set it to on primary display. Now you can set the alignment to four options. You can either fill it, meaning that it'll span across. So if I turn on my other theme, you can see that it spans all the way across. So you can do start, which means it's only in the beginning of your screen, end at the end, and center is the best one for me. It's just nightly, nicely centered in the middle. So next one is icon size, and you can bump this up if you want your icons to be bigger and more clickable. And if you actually turn on icon zoom, you get this cool zooming effect, and you can set the zoom higher and lower if you want. 100 means it doesn't do anything, 100%. 200% means it zooms a lot. I personally like 160, that's the best one for me, but you can set it to whatever you want. Now, I forgot to mention this before, but using this dock is very simple. To add a icon into there, all you do is just go into your application launcher and just drag that icon right into the dock. As you can see, it's appeared here. And to remove it, simply just drag it out. And there it goes, poof. So I kind of like the animations there, very simple to use. Now the next tab over is behavior, and here you can set stuff like hiding the dock. So if I open up a application, say terminal emulator, and make it full screen, you can see that the dock actually disappeared, and I have to go over that area to bring it back into view. You can also set stuff like pressure reveal, meaning that you have to have more pressure to bring into view, and more animations. Now the final tab is docklets, and this is something very interesting. So, you can think of these like widgets, so let me just drag clock in, 
And here you can see that it's more interactive. It's not just a standard icon. It actually shows the time, shows a moving clock icon. Now if we bring in the CPU monitor, you can see it's kind of the same thing here. We have a kind of signal thing like a traffic light showing how much um, CPU is being used. Something that's pretty unique to this dock, it's very handy, at least. You can just hover over it and view whatever you need to do. So that was the Plank dock. The good things about this is that it's super lightweight, super easy to use, and pretty configurable. Okay, now the next dock on this list is called Docky. Now, you can install this through your software center, it'll most likely be there. It is available in the AUR, so I'm going to just look up Docky. And you can see here that it's a full-fledged dock application that makes opening common applications and managing Windows easier and quicker. So I click on this link. This is the homepage, it's wiki.go-docky.com. You have some screenshots, documentation, a big list of themes here. A lot of them here, actually. And you can add new ones here. And let me just install this over here. So install, apply, commit. Now there are a lot of dependencies and other things that it will install alongside it. It is considerably larger than the last one that I talked about, which is Plank. But it does come with a good reason, which is a ton of different features. So once you have this, you can just exit out of this. And also if you're on Ubuntu, you can easily install it using sudo apt-get update and then sudo apt-get install docky. So you don't have to actually add any repositories. So that's great. So once you have it there, let's go over here and look up docky. And here it is in our application launcher. And boom, here we have it. So now you can see that there are a few applications here. Now, if we just click on docky here, and it'll bring up the settings. So you should just leave this one checked, which is start when user logs in so that you don't have to add it manually in session and startup or whatever your startup manager is. Now there are lots of different themes here. My personal favorite is smoke, but you can get lots of them online. Now, once you click on the dock, you can actually configure it doing all this. You can set all your hiding options, your icon size like this, so you can bring that up, bring that down. You can set 3D background, which will actually tilt it down like that, as you can see there, if you want that kind of look for it. Now panel mode will make it full screen, which will divide your applications and your other things here. So the next section is docklets, and here you can just add more widgets. So you have stuff like Clippy, Clock, I actually have a really handy one called Gmail, which you can log into your Gmail account and check that. So there are actually a lot more docklets than Plank on here, so you can just bring them here and just add them to here by clicking add like that. Now one nice thing about Docky is that you can actually have multiple docks. So if you just hit the new dock button at the bottom, you can see that it brings in a new dock there and that you can just click on them to configure each one manually. So let me remove this one by clicking delete dock and there we have it. And the last tab is helpers, which you can install using this one right here. Currently is looks like it is discontinued now. So that's kind of a bummer, but that is Docky. So you can just close out of this and view all your applications and just click on them and you get a nice bounce effect and it's done. Great. So rolling up with the third dock on the list, we have Latte Dock. Now it is based off the Plasma frameworks, so it is more meant for a desktop environment like KDE, but I think you can run it on any desktop environment. So what you can do is open up a web browser, I'll be using Firefox, and go to the GitHub page, github.com slash p-s-i-f-i-d-o-t-o-s slash latte doc. So here's the GitHub page, and you can scroll down past screenshots to the installation section. And it actually has repositories for Ubuntu, OpenSys, Fedora, Arch Linux, and Gentoo. So I'm using Ubuntu-based system, so you can just click Ubuntu. And here we have a .deb package, so I'll click on that, click View Raw, and it will download that. Now once that's done, I can open up a terminal, navigate to the folder where it's downloaded, see downloads, and it should be there. Now I'll just copy the name of this so I can easily enter it in, and then run sudo dpkg-i, and then the name of the package. Enter your root password, and it should start installing. So once that's done, you can close out of all this, and actually launch up the latte doc. So just open it up in your application launcher, 
and here it is. So, if we right click on the dock and click Latte Settings, we have our configuration options. And here we can set all sorts of stuff. So you can set the location of it, bottom, left, right, top, all that stuff. And then you can set alignment, so if you want all your icons on the left, you can do that. All on the right, you can also do that. Justify will make them all spread out throughout the middle. And you can actually set the amount there. So you can just center it. Then you can also set the visibility, so you can make it to dodge or just always have it there. You can set delay animations down here. And the next tab is appearance. And here, you can set stuff like icon size, animation speeds, and animation zoom, or sorry, icon zoom, so if you want, want it to zoom a little bit more, then you can have that there. The final tab is tweaks, and these are just some additional configurations. So here you can actually back up, like import and export your configuration, so if you're moving between systems or just resetting, then this is very handy, and you have all that stuff. So let me just quit out of this, and just have the dock. So now to add an icon to it, you can just drag it right to the dock, like so, and just put it in there, and it should add the icon. So I'm going to just click on one of them, and the animations are actually very smooth. Everything does open up very quickly. Let's go back to the latte settings, and it looks like we can actually add another dock here, and we can actually set each one of them by clicking on their respective ones. That's kind of cool, you can have different docks here. So that was the Latte Dock. It is more geared towards something like KDE, but it still is very good for something that is not even stable yet. So last but not least, we have the Cairo Dock. Now, you can go over to your web browser and go to the URL glx-doc.org. GLX Dock is actually an alternative name. And here you have some more information like wiki, doc, documentation, screenshots, and extras. So you can look at that if you want to. And it also gives installation instructions. Now I'll be installing it through AdMove software, so you can just look up Cairo. Now if you are doing it this way, make sure you install both Cairo Doc and Cairo Doc plugins. If you only install Cairo Doc, you'll get very limited functionality. And if you only install the plugins, you really won't even see anything. So make sure to check both of those and install those. So now that that's done, let's go over here and actually run Cairo Doc. So right off the bat, you can see that we have some fancy effects here. The things are kind of pulsing. And to configure it, we can hold Control, right click, hover over Cairo Doc, and click Configure. So now you might be intimidated by the first time when you open it up as there is a ton of things to configure here. So I'll be walking you through each one of these. So under configuration and under behavior, we have positions. So you can set this to bottom, top, right, left, anything you want. Then visibility, like hiding it. Visibility of sub docs, which I'll get into later. Um, position relative to the taskbar and icons animation. So you can see how that's like pulsing. And if we, we can actually change this to other ones like wobbly, let's try that and hit apply. You can see here that kind of like wobbles in and out, which is really cool. The next sub menu is appearance. Here you can th set things like style and icon size, and also the icon pack. And you also have other things like views and, and then you can have short keys, which can configure the keyboard sh shortcuts with Cairo Duck. Now the first main item is current items. And if you click on this little arrow, you can see every single icon that is currently in your dock. And this is pretty cool because you can actually configure each and every icon, which is just amazing. And you also have an add-ons category here. And here you can add or remove different add-ons. It shows you the name of it and then what it does. So make sure to check some of those out. So we looked at configuration. Now finally, themes, they actually have a big theme store. So you have a bunch of themes here, and what you can do, you can just select one like this, and there are themes ranging from Mac OS to elementary, you have tons of stuff here, and just click on one, and hit apply, and it will download and apply the theme. So now, if you notice here at the bottom, there is an advanced mode, so let me just click on that, and you can see here that we suddenly have a ton more options. And this kind of reminds me of Compiz, there are just a ton of options here. So you can add stuff like icon effects, so we just click on that. And you have to actually first have to apply it, of course. First check that, and then click on that. And you can do stuff like 
adding effects on of Ring of Raw icon, so you just select Firework or something, hit Apply, you can see that there's like little fireworks, which is kind of neat when hovering over your icons, and it does use a lot of CPU, but, but it does look really cool. So let me just turn that off. Now you also have a lot of other options, like having files into there, and some other fun options, system options, accessories, all that kind of stuff. Now let me go back to symbol mode, and now let's take a look at sub docs. So let me add a sub doc by holding control, right clicking, hovering over car doc, hovering over add, and then clicking sub doc. So you can see here that we added a sub doc, and you can think of them like a mini folder. So now if we add something into there, we can just go into our application launcher, drag something in like file manager, make sure the arrows are pointing to the sub doc, like so, it's added in there. And let's do something like uh, Firefox. Let's put it into there. And now, you can see when we hover over it, we get the two icons. Now, if you go into Appearance and Configuration and scroll down, you can actually set the animation for opening sub docs. So if you go here, you can set them to like panel. So apply that. And you can see that it opens it up like a panel over here. Let's try something like Rainbow. Apply, and there we have it, like a rainbow. So those were sub docs, and they actually are very handy if you don't want the icons cluttering up your dock all the time. So that was the Cairo dock, and the main selling point with this one is that it is extremely configurable and customizable. You can basically do anything with this dock, though it does take a bit more system resources. Let's just go to Task, Man Task Manager and see what it's taking. So it's currently taking 118.1 which is a little bit high for a dock, but it's good if you're running a more stable system that has more power, and I highly recommend this for you customizers. So everyone, that is going to wrap this video. Those were the four best docks for Linux, and the ones that I showed you were the Plank dock, Docky, Latte dock, and Cairo dock. Now, th though they are all very good, my two personal favorites are Plank for its speed, and the Cairo dock for its extreme configurability. So if you're not already using a dock, make sure to check one of these out, and if you're using another one, you might want to consider switching, because really, docks are essential to your Linux computer, and they can really enhance your productivity. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button, comment down below, and please subscribe to stay tuned for future Linux videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching, see you in the next video. I'm <laughs> sorry.